Okay, so it's April, well into spring, and uh, we've got April sales data. One thing I've seen so far is that spring has definitely brought the new listings, which we would expect. Yep. Sales haven't quite kept pace though. In most communities, uh, less new listings are outpacing sales. What we are seeing in many cases is an increase in days on market. Closer, uh, the sales that do happen are closer to the actual list price. But our months of inventory is rising, and so you're you're starting to see a bit more balance. Uh, and in some cases, some communities, you could even make the case that it's a buyer's market. What what are you seeing, Larry? Uh, a lot of the same things. Um, March came roaring in like a lion. Um, mm -hmm. We were you know, lots of anticipation what was going on. Uh, first week of April was chugging along really well, and then I felt like everybody packed up their toys and went home. Uh, slowed yes. down. Not to say that sales dropped off completely, but the perception of like that ramp up of activity we were expecting kind of like lost its wind kind of thing. Like it just kind of backed off. Um, definitely seen an increase in listings. There definitely has been an upturn there in business. We're still seeing a lot of relistings. And I find a lot of people have been playing around with this um, list at low to get multiple offers. They're not getting their number and they're relisting it. I don't know if I agree totally with that strategy in today's market. Uh, it's certainly not, wouldn't be my first choice of what to do, and but I'm still seeing it out there and that's causing people to relist, which is a bit of a, a bit of a distraction on the new listings that are coming out. So you really got to differentiate between the two, right. but sales have not kept up for sure. Um, no, now the other side of all that, but the price side of it, we haven't seen the great people being, are willing to go out and spend hundreds of thousands of dollars over asking to get a home. Right. I think people know where their budgets are today. And they don't have that flexibility they had three years ago. Today, they've got a budget they got to work within. And if they can't get that house in that budget, they move on to the next. So we've seen well, a lot of money's not, not as cheap as it was, as you pointed out. Absolutely not. You know, the, the last three rate announcements, I think there, there was a bit of optimism that there was going to be a rate decrease. And, and so there was a flurry of activity in the you yep. know, week or two leading up to each of those rate announcements. Um, those, those buyers are likely buyers who had a certain degree of tolerance for risk. Um, I think it'll still pay off for them. They'll likely have bought well and the rates will come down. And when that happens, the prices will probably go up. But I think right now, the pool of buyers who are, are still sitting on the sidelines are the buyers that are really wanting to see the rate actually change. They're, they're not going to yep. buy on speculation or optimism. They want to actually see it come to fruition before they pull the trigger. Well, if the home they want is just outside of their reach today, they're willing to wait for it. And the wait right. is not so much um, price reductions, so I don't think anybody thinks that's going to happen, but they're waiting for that interest rate shift. And then they're hoping to get into the market before the pricing does take off. Yeah. And quite frankly, with, with what we have out there today, I don't know how much that pricing is going to take off. I think we're back to a moderate uh, change in pricing. I don't think you're going to see you know hundreds of thousands of dollars in increased value just based on activity. I, I think people will come off the sidelines once we start to see rents, rates trend downward, but yep. I don't think it's going to be uh, gangbusters. I, I think you're going to nope. see um, a more moderate approach. It'll probably take a good handful of months at least to kind of clear out some of the uh, excess inventory we've got right now. And then when you look at the groups of uh, homes that are active right now, that under million dollar mark or that entry level price point, there's still a flurry of activity going on there, but people have their limits. Mm -hmm. uh, the higher end luxury market I find is certainly taking an uptick in activity, not necessarily in the stacks. If you look at the stacks, they're not reflecting that, but there are transactions happening at that three, four, five, six, seven million dollar price point that you wouldn't like, they're not reflective of what the rest of the market's doing. So there's certainly been a change there, but again, yeah, there are I people think that are not tied up with interest rates it's that middle ground it's that up that upsizer or that family that needs to go to the next home i find that's the stalled market today they're the yeah, ones that I, are I would agree uh, a, a lot of the sales that i've been working on lately are, are estate sales they're downsizers people moving into retirement homes things like that they're not, it's not people, people taking on additional debt that's for sure choosing arbitrarily to make a change. I'd like a new house. Let's go, let's go shopping. Yeah. You're, you're not seeing as much of that. That'll probably start to happen when the rates come down. Um, it, but you make a good point about the luxury market. It, the things are still moving, maybe not quite at the pace some might like, but, um, but you know, when we say that sales aren't keeping pace with new listings, that doesn't mean there aren't sales happening. Oh no. Sales, sales are, are happening. It's just at a more moderate pace. 
yeah, and it's not where like people people think the spring market is when the market blows up. That's when all the all the chaos happens. We haven't seen that. It's been more of a controlled market as opposed to the chaotic market. Yeah. Well, ultimately, you know, the, the market blows up when when your demand far exceeds your supply. And that can happen anytime. That doesn't have to be spring. That could be February. That could be November. And and a, a telltale sign and all that is that we're still getting multiple offers where there are conditions attached. It's not, yeah. you know, firm deals with high prices and, and no uh, condi or no conditions involved. You're still getting multiple offers where you have finance conditions and home inspections are happening, all good things that we want to see. I mean, quite you know, honestly, I, I, I can even think of a couple examples in Dundas right now that sold quite recently with uh, conditions on sale of buyer's property, which is very rare in any market, Absolutely. much less at spring, in the spring. But even on that finance clause, as a listing agent, I as much as we all would love to have firm offers on everything, I mm -hmm. quite honestly would prefer to have that finance clause in there and know that they have their financing locked up as opposed to hoping they have it locked up. So, oh yeah. You, you don't want to, you don't want a nasty surprise later. No. I mean, I've got one right now that, you know, we were picking between two and one, we had a lot of confidence in who we were dealing with, but they did want a finance clause and they were quite clear why they wanted it and what they wanted. And um, in the end, that ended up being the best deal for us. Well, and that, that makes sense. Sellers are obviously going to choose the one that, that meets their needs best and Absolutely. The one they feel most confident and comfortable with. So and that's not the always the highest price. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. But in the sense of what's been going on, I mean, definitely April, as we always say, I mean, real estate's it's completely unpredictable. We always manage it in the rearview mirror, not going forward, because you right. don't know you can't predict the future. But April certainly kept us on our toes. It was not what everybody had forecast or predicted. Um, going forward, I think it all hinges on what happens with the Bank of Canada. And with Tiff Macklin making that announcement there about a week and a half ago about the possibility that they've hit the end of that limit and we may start seeing some relief coming. Once that trickles out into the media and gets out to the mainstream, I think that'll start to put some confidence back into the market and we will start to see those people on the sidelines decide to come back out now and, and, and make some, some decisions. I think so too. I'm I'm kind of curious to see how the the one to two week period prior to June fifth plays out because yeah. if it's anything like the last three rate announcements, we did see an uptick in activity notably in the week or two prior. Well, people want to try and and hedge and get out before the crowd. They want to they yeah. want to beat the competition. I'd rather buy when I don't have five other people trying to buy in the same house as me. Yeah, and, so, and you know what's going to yeah, happen. Rates come down. There there will be an uptick in competition and uptick in pricing. Yeah. Uh, probably a tougher time including conditions and days on market will will shrink a bit you know like we said before it won't be gangbusters but but you, you know you'll you'll see the tide shift when the rates do turn downward and just based on that timing of the market or the interest rates that could go from you know that busy spring market to where we typically cool off in the summer if the rates start to dip in the summer well that could that could bring some activity into those typically quiet summer months yeah, I, I was just having a conversation the other day with somebody of exactly that, that it's it's entirely possible our summer looks more like our spring. Yeah. Or what we would expect of spring anyway. So, John, what's your response when people say, what should I be doing? I mean, if we're giving people this information and they're sitting there thinking they're ready to move or they're, you know, they've been timing it or trying to time it out. What do you what advice are you giving your clients at this point? Well, I, I, everybody's situation is different. Sometimes now is the right time based on other circumstances if 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 it's not urgent though they, they might be wise to just kind of keep an eye on things until the right property comes up I, I always tell clients if you're thinking about these you know making a move let's go over your current property let's see what the to-do list looks like and let's use this time right now to get organized and get ready because you never know when that right property is going to come up and and, well, if, and when it does that's probably the right time for you because it's what you're looking for and it's similar to what I've been telling my clients as well. Um, you know, if they are shopping for a home um, and they need to sell before they are buy, you need to be ready because oh, you, may not, you may not get that choice later, that chance. Um, but also what you mentioned earlier about that couple of weeks leading up to those, those market announcements, those rate announcements, I think they're key parts or key times for people to be on the market um, because people are going to wait to see a change Kind of like we're trying to predict real estate, right? People are mm -hmm. going to try and predict when they think it's going to happen and they're going to want to be on the market there versus if there's not enough inventory to choose from and you get out before them, you may have a you know a bit more opportunity to 
get yeah. some buyers through that one that are interested in your property. So it, it's it's well, a fine line to tread, but I tell people first and foremost, be ready that when the market does hit where you want to be, you're ready to pull the trigger and it's not starting to plan at that point, but let's let's market at that point. Oh yeah. Yeah. And so with the next rate announcement from the Bank of Canada on June 5th, I uh, I suspect the next time we sit down and record a video like this, it'll be uh, an interesting time. Absolutely. I think, um, I don't know which way to predict in June now. Based no, on what I, I'm on the fence. Week, I'm, I'm thinking, well, I do know this. When they do do a reduction, it ain't going to be more than a quarter point. Oh, no, no. And I, I don't think and anybody I think expects it'll that. Be, very very slow like if we see a half a percent reduction by the end of the year i think that'll be as much as we'll see um and there's other i wouldn't factors. be surprised if that's the limit yeah i mean there's other factors our economy just hasn't changed enough to support it and two the americans i mean they've got their own problems going on down there and we can't come out of out of line with what they're doing and they have no indications of making any changes right now no, they don't have inflation under control. Uh, it's interesting, no. though. Their economy has been fairly robust, though, uh, much more so than can the Canadian economy. Well, that's why they haven't been able to get inflation under control, because they continue to deal yeah. with, a, with a, a booming economy or at least a, an active economy. They, I, I don't think you'll see the Fed move too, too far off their rate position uh, in the near future. No, I don't. I think they're going to be quiet for a while because I don't think yeah. they can make that move. And Canada can't afford to go too far out of step with the U.S., yeah, you can, well, as Tiff Macklem said, you can deviate a little bit, but not much. Yep, because otherwise you're dealing with exchange rate issues then. Yeah. Well, that might help our jobs market and our exports. It certainly isn't going to help with our with other, with our cost of living. So. No, no, exactly. All right, so, yeah, well, I mean, let's, uh, let's see what June brings us, June 5th, the next Bank of Canada rate announcement. And, uh, and I'm curious to see how our May stats look at that point, too. Well, I mean, the first week of May, from what I've seen, has been very similar to the first week of April, but I can't tell you what the rest of this month is going <laughs> Anything's possible. It is. All right. Until then. All right, John. Selling. All the best. You too.